I greet you all, the presidential ones and the ones that are following us through the media, with the peace of the Lord. We are going to open our Bibles in Second King, chapter 6, starting in the verse 1st. The second book of Kings, chapter 6. Let's begin in the verse 1. We are going to project just in case if you don't have your Bible on you. And the sons of the prophet says to Elisha, See now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let's go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. Then one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I'll go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, O oh, Master, for it was borrowed. So he, the man of God said, Where did it fell? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw in there, and he made the iron flow. Therefore, he said, Pick up yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. The church may be seated. My brethren, we see here something that is very connected to us as a church. Here we can see a change of government spiritually. Elijah was taken from the Lord and now Elisha that was the, the youth helper of the Elijah now start to be the official prophet in Israel. And here we see like a school of prophets, many men being prepared, sons of prophets being educated probably to take over in this call. Interesting that the Bible says, Bible said that Elijah when he sees what is about to happen, when Elisha sees what is about to happen to Elijah, he asks for a double portion of what God has given to Elijah. In fact, if we look what Elijah did and what Elisha did also, Bible mentioned seven wonders made by Elijah and 14 made by Elisha. So, Lord has answered what Elisha has asked to the Lord. So, Elijah told him a great and very heavy responsibility in what you asked. So, when the man is up to make what God is asking, nothing will contain. When a man opens his heart to do what is God's project, God uses the man or woman with power, not for his glory, but for God's glory and God's honor. So here we see all these youth, men, sons of prophets, and they were also following Elijah with Elisha. And there were moments that Elisha says, I'll go this way, and Elijah says, no, no, I'll go with you. He won't be without following Elijah. 
for several times. Elijah tried to do something by himself, but Elisha would never allow him to go by himself. The chapter 2 verse 7 says that the sons of the prophet were like far away. Therefore, is so they stood from far and they stood by the Jordan. So the sons of the prophet, this group of prophet that was being prepared. So when they walked together, we can see now in the chapter 6, we see something interesting. The place that we dwell is very small. In other words, it's too difficult to stay here. It's been tight. We need to build our house. So, Elisha says, so go. And they went together to the Jordan. And there, they start to cut material, wood, to build a house. So, brethren, here we see what is the, the daily activities of the church. We, as a servant of God, we are sons of prophets. You know why? Because the, the church is prophetic. The church is a part, very important part of a prophecy. We, as a church, we take on ourselves this heavy responsibility. And we are being raised and educated, learning here, and He is revealing Himself to each and every one of us. Here we are being prepared to learn and do what God has called us to do, to spread uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The greatest prophecy also ab about man is the return of the Son, Jesus Christ. That's why we can be called ourselves the sons of prophets. We belong to something that is prophetic. God has given this gift. And here, here are we. This space and this world, it's tied for us. As the world is suffocating the church, the world and its projects, plans, and values, inverted values, with this, its corrupt, corruption away from whatever is spiritual and prophetic they are trying to squeeze us and they want to steal our blessing they want to suffocate the church and that's why now the greatest desire of the church is to departure we want to go to our eternal dwelling. You don't want a place to stay a little longer. No. Our desire is the same of this man that we read about. We want a permanent place to dwell. And the Lord has this place ready built for us. Here is not our place. We are, we were not called to live here but we will be taken away from this world. We were already redeemed and we are living in the new and living way, the way that will guide us to eternity. That's why the church needs this feeling. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly, Lord. As for the time goes by, it's being more and more difficult to live in this world. What we can see here is a situation that we cannot move at school. People try to silence you. You are in your workplace, sometimes among the family members, among the friends. It's difficult. Nobody respects what you decide to be in the presence of the Lord, but everybody wants respect. They want 
to you to respect the position of the world. Things are different. Six decades ago, it was something different. Now it's different. And they expect respect. The world and its organization, it's all prepared, well prepared to steal the blessings from the church. But that's why we have a cry. Lord, we want a departure. We need to leave this place. And we want to have a dwelling. And our dwelling is in the presence of the God Almighty. And now they start their task. They went to the Jordan. Why did they decide to go towards the Jordan? The place for water, there is what? There is abundance, there's life, there's trees. In the wilderness, there's no, no resources. There's no water, there's no wood. But, the, but by the river, the Jordan, wherever there is water, there is life. There's trees, there's people. There's people living there. The cities normally are built around the waters. Since that time. So their interest was exactly this one. Why the Jordan River? The name Jordan means the one that comes down. The one that came down to give us his life, Jesus. And our desire is to be closer to Jesus. We do not want to dwell in the wilderness, wherever there is no life, no presence of God. But our desire is to live closer to the river, Jordan, wherever the Lord is, the house of the Lord, the place of the blessings for our lives. And they so desire to build a house right there. And what did they use? So they went to the Jordan. And they said, we will take with ourselves. What, what did they say? ABM. So whoever is in construction knows what a difference between, between a book and the piece of wood. So they didn't go there for a little stick. No. They, they, they decide to go for something heavy, strong, a beam, some, something that can hold a weight, pressure. That's what beam is. It's not a, simply a stick. So when you build a house, you need beams, stronger, thick, to, to resist the weight. That's why the Holy Spirit is after people that spiritually is like a beam that can be column structure the, they want to know the things of the Lord so they can resist the weight of the, the world and the sin and all the attacks of the enemy of our souls so we can be a good land good soil a place that when the seed fell, it gives good fruits. A good soil is the one that when the, the Word of God is thrown in there, it will secure the blessing. It will not waste. It will not, it will not cancel the God's promises. That's what the beam is. People that really want to be prepared for a work, to execute a work. Some people are here and tomorrow they leave. They don't have a commitment. No, no. God is looking after people that wants to be like a beam because the blessing of the servant is to be stay, to stay in the presence of the Lord. 
not to be temporarily. Storms, hurricane can come. The column is there, the beam is there to support, to hold the weight of the house, the weight of the, the roof. That's why they say we're going to look for beams. The servant of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going after people like that, strong people. People that never regret to have their lives changed and to let everything go and seek after the salvation. So the Holy Spirit is in a hurry to find people like that. And He wants to use every and each one of us. We have a mission as a church to announce the second come of Jesus. Interesting that when they say, we will there, we will go there. But they have a request. Elisha, would you come with us? And Elisha says, I'll go. So Elisha here represents Jesus and his, in his ministry. The hand of God upon the church. The ministry of Jesus within the church. As once Moses spoke with him. God said to Moses, these people are difficult. What a complicated people. Go with these people. I, I'm not going. I'll send my angels. You go with them. Take these people. Go to the promised land. I have regret to save these people. You know what Moses answered to God? Lord, if you don't go with us, if you don't come with us, we're not going to move. Moses was not after only the benefit, but he was interested in the glory of God. That's why in the text that we read tonight, Elisha, would you come with us? And Elisha says, yes, I'll go. Because above everything, even the miracle is the God of the miracle. The most important for us is to have the presence of God in our hearts. Wherever we go, the most important is this. It's not important to, to have numbers or to have answers of prayers. The most important is to be always in the presence of God, no matter what to stay in the presence of the Lord. And then they start the, the, the construction. So they found the forest, they found the wood, they start to cut with an axe that they had. So they start to work with an axe, very hard, all the work and all the, all the circumstances so one of them cutting one tree he lost an axe so there was an accident and the axe head fell in the water and what he was very concerned because it was not his it was from somebody else's so now he was very sad and very preoccupied. So this piece that was used to cut the tree is the resources of the eternity. The Lord has allowed us to borrow this. As we hear, we have the access of these resources. Everything that the Lord has given us, the fasting, the early dawn, the word of God, prayers, your family and your work anything you have everything you have your health everything we, we consider ours is coming from the Lord because in heaven we don't need any of that in heaven we're not going to need anything from this world in eternity our life will be of praises our bodies will be transformed, incorruptible, not going to be destroyed. We're going to be in the God's presence, and we're not going to be in need of anything. 
But while we're here, here, yes, we will need this axe, this tool, this instrument. It's something that comes from God. And there's a moment in our lives that we, we, we can fail. We can open breaches. And when this happens, we lose the blessing. You lack on giving value to the things of the Lord. You were there, a, a thought came, a feeling, and you lost the blessing. And what is the, the fear? Lord, it's borrowed. There will be moments in our lives that we need to return everything that God has given us. There will be a moment that you're going to present yourself before God and give account of everything. Your children, the ones that the Lord gave you as inheritance, your wife, your work, your testimony, your marriage, the church that the Lord has opened, a great resource that the Word of God, He is the place that we can discover and find out everything we need to serve the Lord in the way that He wants. If you don't read the Word, if you don't walk according to the Word, you're going to fail, you're going to fault. And if the Lord asks you, why you didn't read my word? Why did you seek and investigate in my book? The Holy Spirit sometimes do that. Have you been charged by the Holy Spirit? Did the Holy Spirit knock on your door and ask? And you say, oh, oh, oh today you, you fell big time. You lost the blessing, huh? You should be more watchful. She read more of my word. The Holy Spirit has this, this characteristics. When you feel bad about something, it's the Holy Spirit asking you, where is the resource that I gave you that you received when you came from the world? Why didn't you use? Did you lose it? So Elisha now, when he heard about this cry that he, he lost the, 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 the axe head, when the man sins, he needs to confess, I have fought. And how that, how that hurts. And now, what was the word of Elisha? What did Elisha ask? Read to me. What was the question? Where did you let it fall? Elisha didn't ask why. And why? Because the, the sin is not to be explained, but it's to be confessed. Because if you try to justify your sin, there will be no forgiveness. There's no solution. And what we should expect is forgiveness from the Lord. I confess my sin, and that's why the Lord has taught us to confess. It has to be confessed to the Father. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I ask you for forgiveness. I confess you my failure, my sin, and I ask you that you can redeem me. Give me again the joy of salvation. And the Lord will ask you, where did you fail you? So Elisha, I ask where they fell. And then he cut down a stick. At the same moment, he cast the, the stick in the water and that axe had the iron afloat. 
it did swim and they say take it take it up to you and he put out his hand and took it the Lord wants us to leave here with a blessing completely in our hearts this piece of stick that was thrown in the water is the people the, 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 the Jesus Christ in person is the same experience when the people left Egypt and they found a place with where the waters were like bitter a place called Merah so they left Egypt some days walking they crossed the Red Sea walking came the hunger and the thirst and they found a place that there was a, a well but the waters were, was bitter and then they threw also a piece of stick and the water came drinkable is the Jesus only Jesus can give us again the resources of eternity give us back our fellowship after you confess after you analyze and you recognize your failure confess so the blessing is restored only Jesus Christ can do that and now how can you explain that a piece of iron to a float to swim the miracle is not something that you can explain it's the action of God it's the move that only he can do it in favor of the faithful church the faithful servant the ones that has a, an understanding of eternal life God will make miracles no matter what but it's in his time all we have to do is ask for mercy I have sinned, O oh Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And the miracle will happen. The restoration will happen. God will start to speak again. And you're going to see again the, the wonders of God, the glory. And once again, you will see. And you should be asking, what does God have for me tonight in this service? Where did you lose your blessing, your spiritual blessing? Was in the place of work, in the, the school, in your youth days, recently? Where? Confess to the Lord and you, you see how the Lord will provide you all the conditions you need to receive back. The greatest miracle which is the salvation of your soul. This is the greatest operation of the Holy Spirit. The greatest wonder, biblically talking, is not to open the eyes of a blind man or to heal a, a salvation of your soul. And in order to reach that out, you need to believe in Jesus because he came to the world and he he gave himself and he was thrown upon the waters because when Jesus came down like the Jordan means he came down so the church can go up and that's why tonight again the Lord has this blessing for us if we still have time to be at the feet of Jesus. Let's have a song.
I invite the church to stand. The Lord is talking to us tonight. Stand up. Take possession of the miracle. Stretch out your hands and take it. Tonight, the Lord is giving us an opportunity to receive the resources of the eternity. And those resources are very helpful to have a life according to eternity. The Lord has shown in a vision a household. The Holy Spirit allowed the, the, the person that saw the vision to notice that the whole water system like an x-ray and he could see she could see that there was a clot in several parts of the water system and that caused the water not to flow abundantly but during the service the Lord has blessing with ex an exchange of the the pipes and redo the whole water system put a new pipe a new system and now it, it could be seen that immediately there was a difference because the f the, the f flush of the water the, it was abundant the flowing of the water was abundant in that household let's have a word of glorification to the Lord we bless you Lord we glorify you for your revealed message we bless you as we have confessed our sins every day we exalt you as for we desire Maranatha we bless you as for you have been merciful upon our lives and you have been prepared us for the great the greatest day which is the day that your son will come to rapture us we bless you as for your mercy is the reason for us not to be destroyed we exalt you as you are the only God worthy of praises and glory blessed be your name for your word in the name of Jesus amen blessed be the name of the Lord glory to Jesus we glorify you O Lord your name for one more opportunity in your house it's it is good to be in your presence there's no better place to be than in your presence listening to your voice your word praising songs to you and being able to glorify you and to to speak with you and to see our children since tender age learning how to have a grateful heart in your presence receive our adoration and give us a night of rest preparing us for tomorrow that we can have a productive day where we can once again spread the gospel evangelize and allow us oh Lord to have good encounters and allow us to have another service tonight, tomorrow night that is our prayer grateful in the name of Jesus amen in your name we say may the grace the wonderful grace of our Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolation and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon all of us now and forever amen the church may be seated we came to the to the end of this service and we uh, will allow you to that you that are participating in the zoom meeting open your mic and manifest yourself that you need a prayer an assistance we have deacons and workers and here presently we also are at your disposal to help you and pray we say to all peace of the Lord uh, friendly reminder now from now on every Thursday we're gonna come back to the presential service 
we have some fear that we couldn't do it and we're going to continue to having a zoom transmission for the ones that are not able to come to all peace of the lord right after the assistance the youth meeting 8:45 upstairs the youth meeting upstairs say to all peace of the lord 